It's been a minute since Gone Home came out, but I just finished playing it for the first time, having somehow escaped all spoilers, and I was surprised by how deeply moved I was by its story. As I walked the halls as Katie Greenbrier, piecing together the emotional lives of my sister Sam and my parents, I felt completely pulled in by the honesty of the fears, hopes, and dreams of these fictitious people and how they felt more and more real with every new detail I found. Gone Home was the pioneer of this decade's exciting frontier into exploratory storytelling and games, and it tested the definition of what a game is and what they can offer us emotionally and psychologically, leading to a boom of insightful and emotionally intelligent interactive stories. Sticking with the theme of this channel, I'll be sharing the positive psychological effects gamers can enjoy from mindfully playing Gone Home, such as practicing empathy, building our emotional intelligence, enjoying some identity-fortifying nostalgia, and learning we're not so alone in our relationship troubles with family and others. The mood management levels for this game are ideal for creating a learning environment. This game reflects a lot about real life and pulls us in for deep, calm, meditative thinking. Gone Home lulls us into a state of psychological flow and curiosity, challenging us to think seriously about how the Greenbriars remind us of our own families and how their problems reflect ours. It's this combination of factors that make this game perfect for practicing the surprisingly tough skill of empathy. Empathy's like a muscle. If we don't use it regularly, it can weaken and atrophy. A game like Gone Home can keep our empathy muscles strong, so to speak. From the moment we start finding snippets of Sam's life that show us her struggles, we practice empathy without even knowing it. We feel for her. Even with the game's simple mechanics, walking around and reading and handling objects, we're invited into the hearts of these people. By the time we finish the game, it feels hard to detach ourselves from the Greenbriars. We became so intrigued and fascinated and invested in their emotional lives. If we're aware of this empathy practice and use it mindfully, we can emerge from playing this game with a newfound appreciation for our own lives and all the details we leave around proclaiming who we are and what we're going through. We can turn the compassion and understanding we built towards this fictional family and shine it towards ourselves and our loved ones. Not only is this game super nostalgic for anyone who lived through some part of the 90s and remembers the VHS tapes and the cassette players, this game is also nostalgic for anyone who's lived through the intense and confusing years of adolescence and young adulthood. I was transported back to my childhood in the 90s playing this game. Walking through their house felt every so often like walking into an old memory of mine, just with a lot more square footage. Reading Sam's notes reminded me of just how incredibly difficult it was to be that age, which I have the luxury now to look back on with tenderness, but teenage players will strongly empathize with and I could imagine deeply appreciate the realistic representation of their thoughts, dreams, anger, and struggles to assert their adult personas. Nostalgia is actually very useful for us. Studies show that we enjoy nostalgic media because these stories help us revisit old memories with our current thoughts. We actually use nostalgic stories to better anchor our current selves with our past selves. We build bridges between who we were and who we are, which is known to help us feel more secure about our current identity. As I played this, I remembered more about my own teenage pains, my regrets, my happy memories, my rage, my powerlessness, and everything in between. Visiting that part of myself while also being more or less an adult really did help me feel more continuity between teenage me and 20-something me. Through this game, I was able to tinker with old bitter memories with my current emotional capabilities and lay some of them respectfully to rest. Considering the field of narrative psychology which is all about how our psychological well-being is tied to how well we write our own biographical stories in our minds, this game gave me the mental space to write my own story again, to connect the dots from the angry and emotionally feral teenager I was, to the calmer but still growing person I've become now. With the help of compassionately exploring Sam's story, I eventually felt compassionate towards my own story and my own troubled younger self, giving me a welcome boost in well-being and validation. Emotional Intelligence Emotional intelligence is the measure of our ability to navigate the emotional waters in our lives. There are four factors of emotional intelligence. Understanding the causes of our emotions, their influence on our thoughts, how to interpret and understand them, and how to manage ours and others' emotions. We get a lot of practice with perception and understanding in this game. In fact, you could say that practicing these two skills is the actual gameplay of Gone Home. The gameplay isn't about flipping over objects in our hands, or unlocking the map, or finding all of the diary recordings. It's about understanding why these people felt the way they did. 
This is intrinsically enjoyable to practice in a safe virtual space because we're always, always being tested on these skills in real life. Every day we wade the murky waters of emotions trying to understand our own and predict others, and we have to do all this while getting everything else done in life, and it's exhausting. In this game, we sharpen these skills calmly and in our own time. The more we understand the Greenbriars and empathize with them, the more masterful we feel understanding emotions and the more we strengthen our EI. Lastly, this game is frankly all about how tough relationships are. All relationships. Everyone's emotions, dreams, fears we have to navigate and be considerate of, it gets really tough. This game validates that anxiety we feel when we realize we don't really understand our family even though we really want to. We're not alone in our confusion and desperation to keep our friends and loved ones happy or to keep relationships from sinking. Knowing this and seeing it represented in others, even in fictitious others, we feel less alone and we learn from these stories about how to confront these challenges. Seeing the Greenbrier struggles can even inspire us to be more patient and curious about our loved ones, to be less dismissive and appreciate the incredibly complex emotional lives that they're struggling with that might make them a little prickly sometimes, but understandably so. Overall, Gone Home has a lot to offer us for a few hours of gameplay. If you take this game seriously, approach it mindfully, and play it patiently, you can come out of it with some strengthened real-life skills you can start using today to benefit your relationship with others and yourself. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'll be uploading my blind playthrough of Gone Home soon, and we'll be playing and analyzing more games that can help us strengthen our emotional intelligence. Until next time, happy playing.